Africa is shown on this map. If you look to the south, you will see lots of green plants and vegetation. But things are different when you go north. It is the biggest desert in the world, spanning several countries and having sand dunes that stretch for miles and miles. The Sahara Desert is 9 million square kilometers in size, which is 18 times the size of Spain. But did you know that this huge area of barren sand that takes up a third of Africa used to be full of lush plants thousands of years ago? Where did the Sahara go? What's going on with it right now? In this video, we look at the scary things scientists have found under the Sahara. The Sahara is to the west of the Atlantic Ocean, and the Red Sea is to the east. In the north is the Mediterranean Sea, and in the south is the Sahel Savannah. The huge desert is in 11 countries, Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tunisia. Most people know about the Sahara Desert because of the sand dune fields that are often shown in movies. The highest point of the dunes is about 600 feet, or 183 meters. But only about 15% of the desert is covered by them. There are also mountains, plateaus, plains covered with sand and gravel, salt flats, basins, and depressions. How did the Sahara change from a tropical area to the harsh, dry place it is now? The answer to this question takes us back a long time, maybe a few thousand years. The Sahara has had periods of both wet and dry weather for a long time. The tilt of the Earth's orbital axis causes these changes, which in turn change the angle at which solar radiation enters the atmosphere. Throughout Earth's history, there have been times when During the West African monsoon season, there has been more power coming from the sun. During these periods, which are called African humid periods, it rains a lot more in North Africa. When it rains more, the area gets more trees, rivers, and lakes. But between 8,000 and 4,500 years ago, something strange happened. The transition from wet to dry happened much faster in some places than could be explained by orbital precession alone. This led to the Sahara Desert as we know it today. Archaeologist David Wright explains what happened next in his study. As he looked over the archaeological and environmental data, which he mostly got from sediment cores and pollen records from the same time period, he noticed what seemed to be a pattern. Wherever archaeology showed that people were there. Pastoralists, which are people with their owned animals, there were changes in the types and number of plants. It looked like every time people and their goats and cattle hopped across the grasslands, they left behind a tangled mess of bushes and desert. Wright thought that this meant that by overgrazing the grasses, people were reducing the amount of water in the air, you know, plants give off water, which makes clouds, and increasing the albedo. He thinks that this may have caused the end of the humid weather. These nomads might have also used fire to control the land, which would have sped up the rate at which the desert spread. Do you think of whales playing on the rolling sand dunes when you think of the Sahara Desert? Even though whales can't survive outside of water, there is evidence that the ancestors of today's whales used to swim around in the hot African desert. Back in 1902, a group of geologists led their camels into an Egyptian valley. Western Desert Sandstone rocks had been shaped into strange shapes over many years by strong winds. At night, the moonlight was so bright that it made the sand look like gold. A hill nearby was called the Mountains of Hell because of the infernal summer heat, but in this arid valley lay the bones of whales. Some of the skeletons were 50 feet long and had vertebrae as thick as campfire logs. They were from 37 million years ago, when this area and all of northern Egypt were under a shallow, tropical sea. Geologists didn't know it at the time, but the fossils in the sand would help answer one of evolution's biggest questions, how whales evolved into whales. The fact that these whales were found to have feet was a clue, Scientists had thought for a long time that whales were once land animals that moved into the water over millions of years, losing their four legs along the way. The fact that whales still have bones from their old legs is proof of this. Paleontologists didn't start digging up hundreds of whale fossils in Wadi Hidden until they found legs and knees. 
Footed whales from even further back in time have been found, but the ones in Wadi Hidden are the oldest and best preserved. The valley is about three hours by car from Cairo. It is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site that about 14,000 people visit every year. Paleontologists think that whales' land-dwelling ancestors were scavengers like deer or pigs that lived near the sea. About 55 million years ago, they started spending more time in the water. At first, they ate dead fish along the shore, then they hunted for food in shallow water, and then they went deeper into the water. As they did this, some of them changed in ways that made it easier for them to hunt in water. Over time, they got bigger because they didn't have to carry their full body weight at sea anymore. Their backbones got longer and their rib cages got bigger. Most of the fossils in the valley come from two main groups. Basilosaurus was the big dinosaur that looked almost like an eel. The smaller but very muscular Duradon looked more like a modern whale, at least until it opened its mouth and showed that instead of peg-like teeth, its jaw was lined with sharp daggers. In the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile, the bones of more than 75 whales have been found. Scientists have had different ideas about how they got there. Now, have you heard of the lost city of Atlantis? You will be surprised to learn how this famous city is related to the next big find in the Sahara. This takes us to the Richat, which is also called the Eye of the Sahara. Structure or the Guelper Richat. It is a natural feature in the Sahara Desert that looks like a huge bull's eye. The formation covers an area of desert in Mauritania that is 40 kilometers wide. For hundreds of years, only a few nomadic tribes was aware of the formation. In the 1960s, the Gemini astronauts were the first to take a picture of it. They used it as a landmark to keep track of where they were in their landing sequences. Later, Landsat took more pictures and gave more information about the size, height, and range of the formation. Geologists first thought that Eye of the Sahara was an impact crater, meaning that it was made when something from space hit the surface. But long-term studies of the rocks inside the building show where it came from. Are only found on Earth, which makes geologists look for other answers. The Eye of the Sahara is a geologic dome, according to geologists. There are rocks in the formation that are at least 100 million years old, and some of them were there long before there was life on Earth. These rocks are made up of igneous deposits from volcanoes and sedimentary layers made when the wind moves dust, water, sand, and mud. Geologists can now find kimberlite, carbonatites, black, and rhyolites, which are all types of igneous rock, in the area around the eye. But there's more to this eye of the Sahara than meets the eye. Since Plato wrote about a mysterious island that seemed to have disappeared in 350 BC, people have been looking for Atlantis. We've been looking for it in the wrong places because everyone thinks it's must be somewhere under the ocean, like in the Atlantic Ocean or the Mediterranean Sea. The Eye of the Sahara is where the mythical city is. Solon, who was a politician in ancient Greece, is thought to be the person who told Plato about Atlantis. Jimmy says that it is not only the size and shape that Plato said it was, which is 23.5 kilometers across and 100 kilometers long, but it is also the same color. Plato said that the city was circular, and the mountains he talked about in the north can be seen clearly from space as proof that ancient rivers flowed around the city. Plato said that Atlantis was destroyed in one day and night of bad luck, and that it sank below the waves. Scientists have found evidence that the Earth's climate changed a lot around 11,500 years ago, when Atlantis is said to have vanished. Jimmy also points out images from satellites that look like the aftermath of a tsunami. Anyone alive today would have been able to see. Look at the map of the Eye of the Sahara made by satellites. Doesn't it look like the whole area was hit by a flood or a tsunami? The Sahara Desert keeps giving us mysteries, and the next one has to do with an object. Found there, the functions of which were not known until today. It is called the Clayton Ring. Even stranger, these rings were found in the harshest part of Egypt's Sahara Desert. Named for the desert explorer and geographer P.A. Clayton, 1896, 1962, Clayton rings are open-ended cylinders with a cone-shaped top. They are always found with one or more perforated pottery discs that are just slightly bigger than the smaller opening of the ring but don't fit as lids. Some were made by potters as a set, and some, like the ones on display, were made from old jars and pieces of pottery. 
the people who lived along the Nile did not use these things. Instead, they were a very important part of the. The Sheikh Mufta culture was made up of nomad herders who lived in the Dakhla oasis during Egypt's first dynasties. Clayton rings and discs have been found in the oasis and near this culture's seasonal hunting and herding camps, but surprisingly, they have also been found in caches up to 3,000 feet away. To 300 kilometers away from permanent water sources and further than any hunter or herder could safely go. Why were these things so important that people went out of their way to carry Clayton rings across the desert? This question hasn't been answered yet. Tell us in the comments what you think about the discoveries in the Sahara Desert. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and like the video.